Splat. That's horror. A bucket full of blood, blood cannons hidden beneath a table, latex limbs falling from the ceiling. Since the dawn of the silver screen, gore and horror cinema have walked hand in hand, best friends down a long and winding road, trying their hardest to avoid the plastic fantastic entrails. You see, since the 1963 movie Blood Feast, written and directed by Herschel Gordon Lewis, and widely considered to be the first splatter horror movie ever, the appetite for horror cinema, raising the blood soaked ceiling as high as it can go, hasn't exactly been sated, and the morbid fascination with just how vulnerable the human body can be has been pushed to the max. Exploitation cinema aside, some of these movies have transcended what puts the splat in splatter horror. So let's take a look. Hello horror fans, what's going on? And once again welcome back to the Scary Channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host Jack Finch, just today we curiously take a look at the Top 5 Scariest Splatter Horror Movies. Roll the clip. Contain scenes which under no circumstances should be viewed by anyone with a heart condition or anyone who was easily upset. For the curious amongst you, that particular scene was taken from the warning trailer shown before the original screening of the aforementioned Blood Feast, written and directed by Herschel Gordon Lewis, way back when in 1963. And hey, stuff like that makes it pretty damn immersive, right? The point is, there are many, many movies that technically deserve their place on a list such as this, but truth be told, gore is an acquired taste, and it's movies that find the right sort of balance that truly hold their own in splatter horror. Cannibal Holocaust, Hostel, 2000 Maniacs, the list goes on and and on. So, you know what to do. Let me know your picks below. Kicking off at number five, Zombie, 1979. Whoa, we'll stop there. <laughs> yeah, sorry guys, but that's reason enough to check this movie out, and truth be told, Lucio Fulci's zombie is perhaps one of the finest examples of latex-based giallo zombie horror, and let's be honest with ourselves, whilst everyone was taking a literal stab at the zombie genre in order to get in as many buckets of gore as possible, it's also the point where both of these genres cross over. Essentially what I'm saying is, splatter horror and zombie cinema go hand in hand, so yeah, expect the living dead. And on that point, this movie, 1979 Zombie, also known as Zombie 2 was adapted from a script intended to serve as a sequel to one of the most iconic zombie movies of all time, George A. Romero's Dawn of the Dead. So yeah, the more you know. You see, the thing is, unlike Romero's Dead series, this zombie doesn't do anything in terms of narrative. In that sense, it's a pretty trashy movie. However, no one is watching this movie for the narrative, they're watching it for the gore. And in that regard, Zombie is one of the ultimate undead movies, plain and simple. It is buckets upon buckets of gore. Directed by the legend of Giallo Cinema, the godfather of gore himself, Lucio Fulci, and written by Elisa Briganti and Dinano Sakechi, Zombie tells a tale of a Caribbean island cursed by an ancient voodoo where the long dead ancestors of the island rise from the dead and attack the living. Classic fare, really, and as we said, it was adapted from the original screenplay by Sacchetti that was intended to serve as a sequel to Dawn of the Dead. It stars Tisa Farrow as Anne, the daughter of a legendary scientist who has been at sea for months when his boat washes up into New York City Harbor, sparking his daughter to search for him, which eventually leads her to the Caribbean island of Matul. Again, yada yada yada. She meets a few people along the way who obviously are compelled to help her on her journey, and then as soon as she arrives on the island, we're talking underwater zombies, we're talking eyes in pain on wooden splinters, which is pretty difficult to watch, to be honest, and some of the most anatomically explosive scenes of the late 70s and 80s. This movie paved the way for Italian cinema's propensity towards splatter horror, and because of that, it's one of the best. Coming in at number four, Ichi the Killer, 2001. Okay, here we go. Let's slow things down for a moment. Truth be told, I've wanted to feature Ichi the Killer on this channel for quite some time. And whilst I've also seen a few of you guys bringing it up in the comment section, the truth of the matter is, it's pretty hard for it to find any kind of place on any list. Because, well, it's one of the strangest and most unique movies ever made. Really, it's that weird. But also, that's exactly what makes it so great. In fact, I'm not even entirely sure it should be on this list. But still, maybe that's the point of it. Asian cinema, particularly Korean and Japanese cinema, has quite the penchant for delivering gore in a wholeheartedly unique way, and truthfully, we could fill an entire list with some of their best gore movies. Also, as a side note, we already have a J-horror list, if you're wondering why they're not included here, so go check that one out. This movie, though, Ichi the Killer, deserves its place here today, not only because of its remarkably well-written adaptation of an equally awesome story, but because of its use 
use of physical effects and in that sense it is one of the best demonstrations of the correct blend in my opinion between digital and practical gore. Directed by Takeshi Maiki, one of the most brilliant Japanese directors to have ever lived with a screenplay by Sakichi Sato based upon the manga series of the same name created by Hideo Yamamoto. This film tells the tale of Ichi, an otherwise unassuming and cowardly young man who also just so happens to be a deeply disturbed psychopathic killer. After being used as a pawn by the scheming Gigi who manipulates Ichi into brutally murdering the local Yakuza boss, a man named Kahihara, the crime boss's sadomasochistic enforcer, is then dispatched to figure out just exactly what went down. You know what? Ichi the Killer isn't a horror film and it harkens back to what we said previously about the movie being one of the most unique films ever made, but the elements of horror behind it, particularly when it comes to splatter horror, are something else entirely. Ichi the Killer is a whirlwind of a movie. I'm not sure what it is, but deep down beneath its DNA, the movie defines what gore in cinema can be. In that sense, it subverts the oversaturation of violence and bloodshed in an incredibly intelligent manner. In many ways, in its own unique manner, it is critical of violence for the sake of violence, but most importantly, this movie is just really bloody entertaining, <laughs> and that's all that matters. Next up, at number three, Reanimator, 1985. Yikes! And it's also important to note that I'm feeling spicy, so I'm also including the whole Reanimator series on this point because splat horror abound, and they are certainly some of the best. So yeah, Bride of Reanimator and Beyond Reanimator 2, although the latter isn't in the same league, but hey, three is company. The truth is, excuse the pun, but 1985's Reanimator embodies what it means to truly pull off splatter horror, and hopefully it will be a theme that we will pick up on in our next few entries. Splatter horror, for lack of a better phrase, needs to be funny. There is a reason why gore needs a more morbid humour for it to be enjoyable, else it would just be far too harrowing for the sake of it. It links it back to an opening point, splatter horror is the demonstration of the vulnerability of the human body. It taps into that you either kind of laugh or you cry kind of mentality. You see, particularly without the late 70s and into the 80s, splatter horror hit a kind of fever pitch. It was a time where physical effects were still at their most creative and that's exactly what was needed to make this kind of gore palatable. Reanimator is perhaps one of the greatest demonstrations of that and of course it's down to the awesome Stuart Gordon and Brian Yeo's in the partnership that delivered us some of the most memorable moments in splatter horror history. Written and directed by Stuart Gordon and based upon the HP Lovecraft short story Herbert West Reanimator, it stars the remarkable Jeffrey Coombs as Herbert West himself, a student of medicine at the University of Zurich who unwittingly brings his professor, Dr. Hans Gruber, back to life. As is always the case when you employ a medical monkey's paw though, or you know, you get the dosage wrong, there are some pretty horrific side effects and so ensues 90 minutes of some of the most remarkable splatter horror caught on film. Really, Reanimator is such an entertaining movie that it's hard not to bring a smile to your face and it defines the point we were trying to make earlier. We're in on the joke. The gore works because we're entertained by it. The physical effects in this movie are absolutely brilliant and John Norlin, the artist behind them, explicitly stated that this was the goriest movie he'd ever worked on. He used 24 gallons of fake blood. That's like a pretty large fish tank of blood. Coming in at number two, The Evil Dead, 1981. And it would only take a sequel for us to realise that some deadites do bleed green. Who would have thought it? The thing is though guys, we just can't talk about splatter horror without giving credit to one of the most definitive horror movies of the subgenre. And whilst Evil Dead 2 is perhaps heavier on the splatter in the horror than the original, in terms of scary, Sam Raimi's The Evil Dead hits the sweet spot right between the two. Truth be told, 1981's Evil Dead is a pretty freaking terrifying horror movie for the uninitiated. And yeah, I'm including the trees, the trapdoor, and all the Necronomicon nasties that you could imagine in that estimation. Although we spoke briefly about splatter horror, needing to cut some of the fat by keeping it a little tongue in cheek for an audience to get behind its buckets of blood, the Evil Dead seemed to balance it to near perfection and perhaps that's why Evil Dead 2 got away with being pretty much a straight up remake just with more gore and a boatload of laughs. The original though, there's nothing that funny about it because it's scary guys. This movie perfectly blends the horror fantasy of practical effects with straight up atmospheric dread. It's a masterclass in the art of making movies that you love. And so it's certainly a good job that as kids Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell were best friends because they went on to live their lives with that same kind of DIY horror punk spirit and they went on to make a movie that on paper shouldn't have worked but they crafted it with such love and affection that it can do no wrong in the eyes of many of us horror fans. You see it doesn't really matter if you love the Evil Dead universe or not because the original 1981 movie is the definition of a horror showstopper. In many ways it's a melting part of pretty much every cinematic trope that works well together and perhaps that's why it gets away with the 
morbid fascination in splatter horror. The woods, teenagers in a cabin, a trapdoor, an evil demonic book. That's all we want, really. And also, The Evil Dead has one of the most remarkable character arcs for any horror icon ever. Ash Williams goes from annoyingly lucky coward to unrequited badass in 85 minutes and gets covered in buckets of blood in the process. And the chainsaw hands certainly becomes him. And finally, coming in at number one spot, Dead Alive, 1992. <laughs> Whilst all of the movies that have appeared so far on this list are a credit to the art of gore in horror cinema, only one of them is pretty much perfection. Hint. It's this one. Dead Alive is one of the goriest movies ever made, and whilst it is comfortable as one of the goriest movies ever made, it is also one of the most charming horror movies ever made. And when we talk about striking this weird kind of balance between gore for the sake of gore, and the actual craftsmanship and creativity behind utilising physical effects in horror, this movie is the definitive demonstration of that. This movie is so ridiculous and employs gore at literally every given opportunity that it becomes a layer of comedy in itself. Where you think there couldn't possibly be a moment for a deluge of blood to come cascading down a corridor, that's exactly where it strikes. This movie blends ears with custard and it makes us eat it along the way. And you know what? We're fine with that. You see, we spoke previously about The Evil Dead being made with love, and so too was this movie. And deep down, despite its comedic trappings, Dead Alive is actually a pretty moving tale about a young man finally standing up for himself. Hey, like I said, layers, and you can pull them away like the decaying flesh of a Sumatran rat monkey. And who better to deliver such a tall tale than the remarkable titan of cinema, Peter Jackson. You see, Dead Alive, also known as Brain Dead, tells a tale of Lionel Cosgrove, played by Timothy Balm, who is awesome in this movie, an unassuming young man who lives with his domineering mother Vera in a huge Victorian mansion out in the suburbs of Wellington, New Zealand. Unbeknownst to him though, Vera has been bitten by a ravenous Sumatran rat monkey that was discovered during an expedition to the legendary Skull Island and then shipped back to Wellington Zoo without anyone Batting an eyelid. As you do. Yeah, don't ask. Because after that, Vera and her meddling ways unleash the kind of splatter horror chaos never before seen. The kind of which there's more blood, gore, and guts than pretty much all of the entries on this list combined, actually. Really, it is staggering how much gore there is in this movie, but you see, that's just not the be all and end all of Dead Alive, because Peter Jackson also managed to cram in some absolutely brilliant dialogue and characterization into this horror extraordinaire. This movie was made with love, and before Jackson was at the top of his filmmaking game with Lord of the Rings, he was at the top of his splatter horror game with this. Highly recommended. Well there we have it horror fans, our list for the top 5 scariest splatter horror movies. What do you guys think? Do you agree? Disagree? Have any more to add to this list? Then let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below, as well as any choice picks of your own. Before we depart from today's video though, let's first take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. Lee Gray says, you've got a cult following at my fire station. We have yours channel on almost all shift. Much love from Alabama, USA. You know what, Lee Gray? This is one of my favourite comments of all time. Thank you guys, really. And also, keep saving lives. And we can't really top that, so unfortunately that's what we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video, or just top 5 scary videos in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe bell, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top 5 scary videos, and until next time, you take it easy. <laughs>